welcome back. Those of us who paid attention in science will remember the good old periodic table. Hours upon hours of studying trying to remember the correct symbols for each element. AU for gold, K for potassium. Little did we know about the power of some of these pesky elements. Today we put on our lab coats and safety goggles as we investigate 10 of the most dangerous elements in the periodic table. Plutonium is an extremely radioactive silvery metal that is famed for its use in nuclear bombs and nuclear power. It is a man-made element derived from the transformation of uranium through fission. However, traces of its isotopes do exist naturally. Plutonium was first produced by American scientists in 1940 at the University of California. Plutonium played a huge role in World War II as part of the Manhattan Project. Both the Fat Man bombs used in testing and the bomb dropped on Nagasaki had plutonium cores. The bombing of Nagasaki generated heat of around 3,900 degrees Celsius and winds of over 624 miles per hour, killing at least 39,000 people instantaneously. Many others died later from the horrific effects of the bomb. Most likely exposure to plutonium is through breathing and once in your body, plutonium can remain in the lungs, bones and other organs for decades, exposing the surrounding tissues to radiation which can eventually lead to cancer. <laughs> Mercury, unlike many other elements, can be absorbed through the skin, making it even easier to be exposed to. Mercury is the most potent neurotoxin known to man. Put simply, there are no other chemicals which can affect your brain so drastically. Scarily, mercury does not break down in the body and continues to accumulate with exposure. This is why we advise not to eat too much of certain types of fish. Mercury builds up in water systems causing the fish to become toxic, in turn exposing us as we eat them. Until around 1980, mercury was used for numerous things including paint and even as part of the silver fillings implanted by dentists. Initially, it was thought that mercury was bonded so well with the other metals in the filling, it could not escape. We now know this is untrue. One or two silver fillings will cause no harm. However, several of these fillings could lead to mercury poisoning, as the vapours are slowly released. Mercury poisoning has many unpleasant effects. Symptoms include itching burning pain in the skin, the sensation of small insects crawling on or under the skin, discoloration of cheeks, fingers and toes, and swelling or even peeling of the skin. Mercury poisoning is particularly detrimental to children and can be passed through mother's placenta and breast milk to their children. Exposure has been linked to autism, ADHD, physical and developmental delays. Mad Hatter's disease is the name commonly used to describe the occupational chronic mercury poisoning suffered by hat makers who were exposed during fetting. The phrase, as mad as a hatter, is a result of the neurological damage the mercury causes. Other symptoms include bleeding from the ears and mouth and loss of appendages such as teeth, nails and hair. Arsenic occurs naturally in many minerals and also as a pure elemental crystal. Like mercury, arsenic is very poisonous to humans. In the past, arsenic was first choice for poisoning enemies. However, with today's science, it is very easy to detect, so villains and jealous wives are less likely to use it. Still, people die regularly from arsenic poisoning. This begins with headaches, confusion, drowsiness and severe diarrhoea. As the poison develops, convulsions occur followed by vomiting, blood in the urine, severe stomach and muscle cramps and hair loss. All of this happens as the lungs, kidneys and liver slowly shut down, which eventually results in entering a coma and a slow, painful death. When we think of chromium, we think of shiny car parts. This is not its main function. It is also one of the elements that is essential to most higher organisms. But chromium, like many other elements, has a dark side. 
In one of its farms, chromium becomes a genotoxic carcinogen, something that can interfere with your DNA, drastically increasing your chances of developing cancer. Horrifyingly, there are plenty of examples of industrial pollution involving chromium, even in developed countries. Dangerous levels have been recorded within the past five years in both Australia and the USA. Lead is a soft, malleable, post-transition metal. Throughout history, lead has been used for many things. Paint, eating utensils, toys and water pipes just for starters. This is until the discovery that it is highly toxic. Whilst it might not be the most toxic element, it is probably the most likely you'll come across. In high doses, lead can be lethal. Symptoms include vomiting, staggering, weakness, seizures, coma and death. But this is rare. It is long-term exposure that affects most people. While still serious in adults, lead poisoning is particularly destructive in children. This is because it stunts the developing nervous system, leading to irreversible damage, causing a permanent reduction in IQ. Cesium is a soft, silvery gold, super reactive metal that is highly explosive. It is one of only five metals that is liquid at room temperature. This metal needs no encouragement to spontaneously burst into flame. Merely being exposed to oxygen can cause an explosive reaction. To prevent any unwanted blasts, cesium must be stored in vacuums and only in small quantities. Hydrogen is the smallest element in the periodic table and is the most abundant substance in the universe, responsible for roughly 75% of all mass. Hydrogen is on our danger list because it is fiercely flammable. The most famous case of hydrogen combustion being the Hindenburg airship disaster. The passenger airship exploded killing 36 people. Sabotage by gunshot was suspected, although later rejected in favour of the static spark hypothesis. Horrifyingly, hydrogen flames are near invisible, therefore you could be incinerated before you even saw the fire. Adding to its danger, hydrogen is a key ingredient to some of the most atrocious acids. One of the most horrifying being fluoroantimonic acid, one billion times stronger than sulfuric acid. Fluorine is the lightest halogen element and exists as a highly toxic yellow gas. Fluorine was first isolated in 1886 by Henry Moissan and was later used as part of the Manhattan Project in World War II. Fluorine is an unpleasant substance. The pale yellow gas is corrosive, highly poisonous and will try to react with almost anything, often explosively. Fluorine is chlorine's more unstable reactive relative. Chlorine makes bleach and mustard gas, amongst other things, so imagine these things, but much worse. Just 25 parts per million concentration of fluorine is potentially lethal. It acts by attacking the lungs, airways and eyes, effectively blinding and suffocating the victim. Inhalation of a higher concentration of fluorine will cause certain death. Beryllium is an element which is made by the reaction in stars. It is therefore relatively rare. The dust from beryllium is so bad for you that when inhaled it cripples. They even named a disease after it, beryllosis. This incurable condition causes lesions in the lungs similar to those found in tuberculosis. The symptoms are in fact often confused with TB and the long-term effects may result in lung cancer. Polonium is a rare and highly radioactive unstable element which was first discovered in 1898 by Pierre and Marie Curie. Whilst polonium might not be the deadliest element, it is one of the most effective poisons used by man. Pound for pound, polonium is 250,000 times more toxic than cyanide. 
This toxicity is radioactive and caused by the release of alpha particles which ravage organic tissue. Thankfully, alpha particles cannot penetrate the skin. But unfortunately, if ingested, one gram of polonium would be sufficient to kill 10 million people. A recent illustration of the power of polonium is the case of Alexander Litvienko, a former officer of the Russian Federal Security Service and the KGB. He fled Russia and gained political asylum in the UK, where he became a journalist. In November 2006, after meeting with two former KGB agents, Litvienko fell ill. He experienced severe vomiting and diarrhoea and could not walk without assistance. He died three weeks after falling ill. Tests conducted on his body showed he had high levels of polonium in his system. As he lay on his deathbed, this photograph was taken and one of his last statements spoken. I want the world to see what they did to me. That's all for tonight. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and make sure you like, share and subscribe for more New Fusion action. I've been LJ. Sleep tight.